So the first story that we're going to get into is Gen Zers. You guys are having a tough time. I'm a millennial. I had a tough time too. But it seems to be increasingly worse for Generation Z. Now, this was released recently in Fortune. Gen Zers are now polyworking some new term that they came up with here because holding down just one job doesn't pay enough or give them the flexibility they want. So they're talking about long story short, working more than one job. I had never heard of this as referred to as poly working before, but you know, they come up with these terms, you know? So let's dive into this a little bit. And then I'm going to show you a video clip that explains why this idea of having a hustle is actually dangerous. So let's go on. I'll make it a little bit big because their fonts are a little tiny. Traditionally, people would find a vocation they enjoyed and steadily climb the ranks, dedicating their career progression to one employer. But as the cost of living has increased, wages stagnated, and people took to working longer, professionals today aren't waiting for their boss to promote them. Instead, they're taking matters into their own hands. After years of job hopping, and more recently, the expulsion of side hustles, workers are splitting their time across numerous employers at once. The phenomenon of working two or more jobs, called polyworking, came about as people seized the opportunity to take on multiple full-time roles while they were working from home. Now, I just want to chime in here for just a second. This was an issue before the pandemic. I want to make that clear. I knew people who were working multiple jobs. I've worked multiple jobs before. So this isn't something that's new, but it appears that it has increased uh, since the pandemic. And the generation that's been hit the hardest by this according to this article, is Generation Z. Now, I would argue some of us millennials have had to go through this as well because we had to go through the 08 housing crisis. So some of us also got hit with economic insecurity and a lot of doubt. So we had to work multiple jobs. I told you guys this before. At one point, I was waiting tables and I worked retail at the same time, six days a week. So I want to be clear when I say that this is not new but now that we are in another economic situation with inflation or price, or price gouging, as some people like to refer to it, and on top of that, we still have some remnants of the pandemic as well. Costs are high. Rent is still high. People are finding themselves working multiple jobs uh, yet again, and that includes people who are professionals. It's called a side hustle. Without a tiresome commute, getting one job to another is as easy as signing into your computer for your second shift of the day. And it's why, according to new research, a third of workers are holding down three or more jobs. I want to reiterate again, this is not new. People have already been working multiple jobs, but it has increased. So who is more likely to juggle jobs? Paycheck surveyed over a thousand American workers to find out who is most likely to juggle multiple jobs and the impact it's having on its workers. They found that while 40% of workers overall currently have two jobs, this number rises to 46% of Gen Z. Now, the fact that 40% of all workers or having to work two jobs, not even get into the Gen Z part yet, that in itself is a big red flag. That's a problem. Let's remember people aren't working two jobs because they wanna be rich. These people are working two jobs to get by. But 46% of Gen Z, <clears throat> and not only are the youngest generation of workers the most likely to be holding down two jobs, they are also even more likely to be splitting their time between three or more employers. A full 47% hold down three or more jobs, according to paychecks, meaning that 93% of Gen Zers are holding 
multiple gigs. Let's highlight this. 93% of Gen Zers are holding down multiple gigs. That's way more than half. That's almost 100%. I tried to warn people about this last year. For those who don't know, I'd worked in higher ed for over a decade. I was an academic advisor. The Gen Z generation, they were my students. So I saw this. I, I saw it coming. I saw it happening. I saw a lot of their frustration. Some of these kids that got full-time jobs right after they graduated from college, they still had to pick up something on the side, another job. And that was more so to pay rent unless their parents were helping them. That was more so to pay rent and to start paying off their student loans. This is why I stress the need for canceling student loans. Now, I agree with you, Drav, that is extremely dangerous, yes. This type of work, working all these multiple jobs, it can have a wear and tear on your health. So you are going to be more stressed. You may have more health issues. You're obviously not going to get as much sleep. So you're losing sleep and that also affects your health and your, your mental health, your well-being. This is not healthy. And despite what some people may tell you, some people like to brag about a hustle culture. Sometimes you'll hear rappers talk about this. Yeah, I had my hustle on, had to get my hustle. I was working three jobs. Then I had to bustle. I tried to rap. I can't really. But you'll hear people brag about this. And I want to be very clear to you. This is not something to brag about. Having to work multiple jobs is not a bragging point. I used to tell my students this when I worked at MIT, they would come to school and they would brag about the fact that they had been awake for three days straight. And I would tell them that's not something to brag about. And they would say, well, that's just how hard I've been studying and doing my problem sets. Problem sets means homework at MIT, FYI. So they would say that and I said, that's not a bragging point. Your body will eventually start to break down if you're not getting enough sleep. It is important that you sleep. And I don't think a lot of people understand that. Now, when you're young, you may be able to deal with it a little bit better. But as you get older, it will have a wear and tear on your body. Not to mention, when you're not getting enough sleep, that can affect your brain power. We should not brag about this, and we should not encourage it either. Meanwhile, 33% of millennials are holding down three or more jobs compared to 28% of baby boomers and 23% of Gen X professionals. So again, like I told you, Gen Z and millennials, we're the ones that are having to usually pick up these multiple jobs the most. But even the fact that 28% of baby boomers, like that's my parents, you guys, even the fact that baby boomers are having to work multiple jobs at their age, what does that tell you about the economic situation that people are in? This is one of the problems with capitalism. Some people like to refer to this as people were trying to keep up with the Joneses, but I, I beg to differ. Most people that I know that have had to work multiple jobs are not trying to keep up with the Joneses. They're just trying to pay their rent. And nowadays, because grocery prices are higher, now you have that to worry about as well. And I don't see those grocery store prices going down anytime this year, based on what I've read. So we have a problem. We have yet again, another generation of younger people having to work more jobs, work more hours, and receive less pay than their parents and their grandparents would have had at this point in time. The American empire is crumbling. We just have to be clear about that. The fact that you have people that even have college degrees and they still have to pick up another job, that tells you how much people are struggling. But I want to get back to this point about this hustle culture, because I want you to understand 
that you should never encourage people to have to hustle. And it is not a bragging point that you have to hustle because what that says is that you are not paid enough. You're not paid a living wage in this country to just have one job. And one of the things that employers would complain about in reference to Gen Z generation and some of us millennials is that we job hop. Every year, the employers would say, I'd love to hire students from this program. I'd love to hire students from the school. But they come to our company and they stay one year and then they quit and they go to another company. But they never stop and ask why that is. And the reason why Gen Z and millennials are more likely to job hop is so that they can get a significant promotion to pay their bills. And what we have seen across, at least across academia, what we have seen is that a lot of these kids, they're getting salaries that are below what they should get if they were their parents' age at this point in time. In other words, wages did not adjust for inflation. These kids are not getting promoted. So in order for them to make more money, they have to leave the company that they're at and go to another company just to get the raise. This is why they're going to be there for like one year. And then they say, okay, my rent increase. I have to find another job at another employer. Sometimes even if it's a lateral move, they still get a significant increase. But let's get into this clip here about why hustle culture is not good for you at all. This is hustle culture, the ugly truth. In today's highly competitive world, hustle culture has become the norm. On paper, hustle culture seems good and all, but in practice, it can be quite dangerous. This video will go over what hustle culture is and my thoughts on whether it is a good thing or not. I hope this video will spark some discussions on hustle culture, so be sure to leave a comment with your thoughts on the matter. So what is hustle culture anyway? Hustle culture is all about constantly working. Those who believe in hustle culture try to devote as many hours as possible to working or hustling. Work is meant to be done everywhere, not just the office, since we have the tools to work anywhere we want. Hustle culture is a lifestyle, and it's celebrated by a lot of people, including companies. One of the most famous advocates for hustle culture is Elon Musk. Everyone knows how many hours he puts in working each week, and he believes that people who want to make a difference in the world need to work more. There are way easier places to work, but nobody ever changed the world on 40 hours a week. This is the guilt. This is the shaming here that I was referring to. This type of statement can make young people feel like if they're not working more than 40 hours a week, then they're not actually being productive. And I think we need to learn to redefine what it means to be productive. Because does it necessarily mean that you are productive if you work 60 hours a week? Can you still be productive if you're working 40 hours a week or 30 hours a week? People in Iceland who are now have the opportunity to work just four days a week, they have found that they're actually more productive working four days a week instead of five days a week. So who determines what is considered to be productive or not? It seems like it's usually the CEOs. The reason why people believe in hustle culture and grind like crazy is because it usually results in climbing the corporate ladder faster or getting the results you want faster in your business. Studies have shown that more working time has a positive correlation with higher corporate position. That sounds good and all, but... But sometimes it's all about who you know. How many of you have, have worked for an employer and you've watched co-workers of yours who worked their butt off, worked overtime, worked off the clock, worked at home, never got promoted, never, never got those big promotions. But instead, what you did see are the co-workers of yours that did just enough to get by and they're the ones that get promoted and they're the ones that may not get a significant raise when it comes time for your annual review, but they're the ones that would get those big promotions. And have you ever sat back and thought to yourself like, why are they getting promoted 
When other people in this office are working more hours and putting in the, the grind, they're doing the daily grind and they're doing more work. Why are they not getting promoted? But the people who do just enough are getting promoted. This is the danger about working hard. Sometimes you can work hard besides the impact on your health. Sometimes you can work really hard only to find out you're just going to stay exactly where you are. And sometimes a promotion is not necessarily about how hard you work. Sometimes a promotion is about who you know. And let's be real. Sometimes managers play favorites. Sometimes they have their favorite people that they just handpick. They don't have to work really hard. They don't have to go above and beyond. They've already decided who they think would be best in that position, whether they have the experience or not, or whether they've put in a lot of hours. The study also showed that their mental health and sleep quality got worse. Adult following hustle culture might get you the results you want. Here's why I think it isn't as good as it seems. First off, hustle culture is not as productive as it seems. In theory, working for lots of hours might seem like it will get you a lot of results, but in reality, things are different. Hustle culture focuses on quantity over quality, and it promotes yep. getting as many things done as possible instead of focusing on the quality of the work. I always believed in working smarter rather than harder, and that focusing on the quality of your work will yield better results than just putting in hours nonstop. There's also this thing called the law of the diminishing returns that shows why working more isn't always the answer. The law I want to pause here and stress the law of diminishing returns. This is very important. So what it says here is most productive input leads to productive returns. It pays to invest more time and effort. Diminishing returns. Each added input leads to a decreasing race rate of output. It's best to stop somewhere within this phase. And then you can see negative returns. Avoid this phase. Not only to do you, what? Not only to do you not get a, oh, they got a typo there. Not only do you not get a return for your effort, you decrease your overall output. So you want to try to avoid that. And, and that's, that's very key. The people who overdo it. I've always said that quality is better than quantity. Of diminishing returns states that at some point, the benefits gained is less than the amount of energy invested. At some point, working more won't help you get the results you want. Also, as mentioned before, studies have shown that working too much hurts your mental health. So if you keep working with that kind of mental health, the quality of the work you output is going to be terrible. I strongly believe that you are better off working smarter rather than harder. Second, hustle culture hurts your physical health as well. Yes. When you spend all that time working, you won't have that much time to exercise. A lack of physical activity can lead to many major health conditions, which will make you unable to continue working. Worst case scenario, working too much can lead to death. If you don't think overworking is that bad, then you should look at Japan. People in Japan work like crazy, and some of them overwork themselves to death. Other people have even killed themselves due to the stress of working too many hours. Working is good and you need to put in work, but don't overdo it and take care of yourself. I just want to add here as well, uh, in reference to like your physical health, for those of you that have desk jobs, it's actually not good for you to sit for long extended periods of time. So they actually have these standing desks now that you can use where you can actually stand up every now and then and, and do your work. Uh, but what you should be doing is getting up and walking away from your desk and going for a walk. That's really what you should do. Uh, long periods of sitting will put a lot of pressure on your back as well as your legs and your neck. So it's not they don't, doctors do not recommend that. At some point you need to get up and move. And if you find yourself that you have to be glued to your desk for like seven straight hours, then that is not a healthy working environment. But to that point about exercise, if you're working constantly all the time like that, when are you getting the opportunity to exercise and to take care of yourself? Third, hustle culture doesn't allow you freedom to think about other things. Hustle culture makes you obsess over work like crazy. 
when you are grinding like crazy, your only focus is on work. You start yes. to neglect other things like spending time with friends and family or spending time on your hobbies. Everyone knows that if you enjoy your work, then it isn't really work. But when you spend way too much time on something, then it starts becoming less and less fun. This is very true and I'll, I'll leave it there, but there's other videos that you can watch as well that explain why hustle culture is actually uh, dangerous. But this is true. Have you guys ever hung out with a friend who was working all the time, who was working multiple jobs or was what we would call a workaholic and you guys are hanging out and maybe you haven't seen them for like a couple of weeks. You guys are going to get drinks and the entire time you're hanging out, they're on their phone answering emails. This is also not healthy. For all of you that have your email on your phone, I recommend that you remove it from your phone. Your work email should not be attached to your personal cell phone. If your boss gets upset, you could tell them you heard it from me. I don't know. <laughs> Just tell them you heard it from me. Because the reality is, if you have it there, nine times out of 10, you're going to look at it. If that notification bell goes off that you received an email, nine times out of 10, you are going to look at it. So these are just things I think we need to be more conscious of. And I think it's it's sad that Gen Z and, and some millennials still are having to deal with this type of, of work culture. No one, no one in this country should have to work more than one job, whether you have a college degree or not. Sure, author, I can do that. Um, Eric, can you put the link to that video in the in the chat? There are so many of them on YouTube too, but I felt like that one was more straight to the point. <laughs> so I decided to use that one. Gonna go to some of the comments. Brad said, I used to work 12 to 14 hours a day for a company. They thanked me by laying me off and outsourcing my labor. Workaholism is poisonous, I agree. Angela says, I work four days a week with one of the days off being Wednesday. It's the best schedule I ever had. I'm never overwhelmed and I am way more productive. Scott, more people need to read and understand Thomas Peckety. So there can be a constructive discussion about how to fix the problem. I'll have to look into that. What's up, Where he says 33K subs. Seems like the channel gained about 1K in a week or so. Yeah, so apparently so. Um, I don't always keep up with this kind of thing. Like, you know, I'm busy. I'm a busy person. A lot of times I just post and go. But I did notice that apparently I did cross over uh, 33,000 subs. So thank you guys so much for your support. Yeah, that really shot up there. <laughs> it really did move pretty quick. Um, what's that, John? Hustle culture helps the boss. There you go. There you go.